Hi, I know my picture isn't looking the best and I'm hoping that lamp will stay behind my head. <laughs> but I know that Alma 36 is pretty good. Not sure why, but I'm fixing to read it to you. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. That lamp wants to glare behind my head. It's not my aura, guys. It's the lamp. <laughs> With all these glares. Okay, so I'm going to read probably Alma 36 and 37, but in separate chapters because I just read a little snip. It looks like I need to do that. Um, the Commandments of Alma to his son Helaman comprising chapters 36 and 37. So that's why I said that. And like I said, I'm going to try to keep that glare out of here, but might not be successful. Okay. Here's a synopsis for 36. Alma testifies to Helaman of his conversion after seeing an angel. He suffered the pains of a damned soul. He called upon the name of Jesus and was then born of God. Sweet joy filled his soul. He saw concourses of angels praising God. Many converts have tasted and seen as he has tasted and seen. Alma 74 BC. Sorry about that one. Okay. The main thing is that I read it and you listen to it. Hopefully it'll all come out okay. <laughs> My glasses aren't the best either. For some reason, I don't have the right prescription. Okay, so here's verse 1, okay? My son, give ear to my words. For I swear unto you that inasmuch as ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall prosper in the land. I would that ye should do as I have done in remembering the captivity of our fathers, for they were in bondage, and none could deliver them except it was the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, and he surely did deliver them in their afflictions. And now, O my son, Helaman, behold, thou art in thy youth, <clears throat> and therefore I beseech of thee that thou wilt hear my words and learn of me, for I do know that whosoever shall put their trust in God shall be supported in their trials and their troubles and their afflictions and shall and shall be lifted up at the last day. And I would not that ye think that I know of myself. Not, that lamp is just going to be there, isn't it? All right. And I would not that ye think that I know of myself, not of the temporal, but of the spiritual, not of the carnal mind, but of God. Now behold, I say unto you, if I had not been born of God, I should not have known these things. But God has, by the mouth of his holy angel, made these things known unto me, not of any worthiness of myself. For I went about with the sons of Mosiah, seeking to destroy the church of God. But behold, <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, I'm going to start with verse 6 again. For I went about with the sons of Mosiah, seeking to destroy the church of God. But behold, God sent his holy angel to stop us by the way. And behold, he spake unto us, as it were the voice of thunder, and the whole earth did tremble beneath our feet, and we all fell to the earth. 
for the fear of the Lord came upon us. But behold, the voice said unto me, Arise, and I arose, and stood up, and beheld the angel. And he said unto me, If thou wilt of thyself be destroyed, seek no more to destroy the church of God. And it came to pass that I fell to the earth. And it was for the space of three days I was correct. I said three days. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to say that again, bears repeating, especially, you know, I said three days all this time, and then I read something that made it sound like it was less than three days. So here it is, it's three days, okay? And it came to pass <clears throat> that I fell to the earth, and it was for the space of three days and three nights that I could not open my mouth, neither had I the use of my limbs. And the angel, oh, it hurts. Oh, and the angel spake more things unto me, which were heard by my brethren. <coughs> but I did not hear them. For when I heard the words, <coughs> if thou wilt be destroyed of thyself, seek no more to destroy the church of God, I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, I was struck with such great fear and amazement, lest perhaps I should be destroyed, that I fell to the earth and I did hear no more. But I was racked with eternal torment. I know I'm having a problem here. I should turn off the lamp and turn on the light above, but it gives me a problem too, I think. Okay, I know I probably read this, but I'm going to read it one more time. Oh. But I was racked with eternal torment, for my soul was harrowed up to the greatest degree and racked with all my sins. Yea, I did remember all my sins and iniquities, for which I was tormented with the pains of hell. Yea, I saw that I had rebelled against my God, and that I had not kept his holy commandments. Yea, and I had murdered many of his children. Wow. Or rather, led them away unto destruction. Yea, and in fine, so great had been my iniquities that the very thought of coming into the presence of my God did rack my soul with inexpressible horror. O oh, thou, okay, that's not what it says. Oh, okay, this is verse 15. We're starting again. O oh, thought I that I could be banished and become extinct, both, both soul and body, that I might not be brought to stand in the presence of my God to be judged of my deeds. And now for three days and for three nights was I racked even with the pains of a damned soul. I know that thing is right there. And it came to pass that I was thus racked with torment while I was harrowed up by the memory of my many sins. Behold, I remembered also to have heard my father prophesying unto the people concerning the coming of one Jesus Christ, a son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. Now as... Okay, this is verse 18. Now, as my mind caught hold upon this thought, I cried without, within my heart, O oh, Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me, who am in the gall of bitterness and am encircled about by the everlasting chains of death. 
And now behold, <clears throat> when I thought this, I could remember my pains no more. Yea, I was harrowed up by the memory of my sins no more. And oh, what joy and what marvelous light did I behold. Okay, I did behold. Yea, my soul was filled with joy as exceedingly... No. My soul was filled with joy as exceeding as was my pain. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that there could be nothing so exquisite and so bitter as were my pains. Yea, and again I say unto you, my son, that on the other hand, there came, there can be nothing so exquisite and sweet as my joy, as was my joy. Yea, methought I saw, even as our father Lehi saw, God sitting upon his throne, surrounded excuse me, with numberless concourses of angels, in the attitude of singing and praising their God. Yea, and my soul did long to be there. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> What's worse? Okay, so verse 23. But behold, my limbs did receive their strength again, and I stood upon my feet and did manifest unto the people that I had been born of God. I know, I need to get in the middle of here. Okay, born of God. That's where I ended. That was verse 23. Okay, 24. Yea, and from that time... Even until now, I have labored without ceasing that I might bring souls unto repentance, that I might bring them to taste of the exceeding joy of which I did taste, that they might also be born of God and be filled with the Holy Ghost. This is verse 25. Yea, and now, behold, O my son, the Lord doth give me exceedingly great joy in the fruit of my labors. For because of the word which he has imparted unto me, behold, many have been born of God and have tasted as I have tasted and have seen eye to eye as I have seen. Therefore, they do know of these things <clears throat> of which I have spoken, as I do know, and the knowledge which I have is of God. Maybe I just can't get me in the lamp. <laughs> I have to change stuff up here. All right, verse 27. <clears throat> and I have been supported under trials and troubles of every kind. Yea, in all manner of afflictions. Yea, God has delivered me from prison and from bonds and from death. Yea, and I do put my trust in him and he will still deliver me. And I know that he will raise me up at the last day to dwell with him in glory. Yea, and I will praise him forever. For he has brought our fathers out of Egypt. And he has swallowed up the Egyptians in the Red Sea. And he led them by his power unto the promised land. Yea, and he has delivered them out of bondage and captivity from time to time. Yea, <clears throat> yea, and he has also brought our fathers out of the land of Jerusalem. And he has also, by his everlasting power, delivered them out of bondage 
and captivity from time to time, even down to the present day. And I have always retained in, let's see, retained in remembrance their captivity. Yea, and ye also ought to retain in remembrance as I have done their captivity. But behold, my son, this is not all, for ye ought to know, as I do know, that inasmuch as ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall prosper in the land. And ye ought to know also that inasmuch as ye will not keep the commandments of God, ye shall be cut off from his presence. Now this is according to to his word. I know, I know, I couldn't tell. So I hope you just listened, even if there was a glare. Just turn away, but keep it on. Okay, so that was Alma 36. And he's telling about his conversion. And so I was correct about the three days and three nights. So the threes happen a lot in the scriptures, okay? And I can tell it's dark in here. I need to change the lighting up. It's in the middle of the night again. I keep falling asleep. I sit on the couch and watch Hallmark movies with Dad, and he goes to sleep. And I've been watching them, and then also multitasking on my channel and on Facebook, you know. And then I fall asleep. So then I sit there and fall asleep. And I'm having trouble with my sciatica. I've got to quit sitting around. It's really quite painful. I guess it's good for me to know the pain that someone else goes through, but I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. It hurts. It hurts to try to sit up. It's like a straining of my muscles, and and I'm hoping it's just going to go away. The doctor said it could just go away in a couple weeks, you know. Otherwise, it's going to start shooting pain down my leg, and that is going to be miserable. But we don't want that. We don't want that at all. Okay, so somehow I need to get rid of that light. I have to pull this thing over on this side. That's what I should have done. But I could have, should have. <laughs> okay, guys. I'm going to stop because I'm going to go ahead and read um, verse 37. Because it's, it's the second part of this conversion story that he's telling Helaman. And Helaman was a pretty great guy. I read something from Helaman earlier when I first started reading something. They had read it in the Sunday school lesson. And I'm not sure what verse or anything it was, but it was about the sealing power. Okay? The sealing power. What you do in earth is the same in heaven. I'm not saying my words right, but it's, you know... The power to seal for time and all eternity is part of that, okay? Because it talks about the sealing power and what we do here on earth will count in heaven as far as being married for time and all eternity. If you don't break your vows and covenants with the Lord and you want to continue on with that that you chose, then you can have your mate forever, guys. Forever. Let's see, to infinity and beyond. I'm talking kind of quiet right now, so maybe you won't hear me. <laughs> to infinity and beyond. Now, do we want to be with that person for that long? Oh, my. Let's hope that they're good. Let's hope we're good. So, make good choices. Make right choices. Do good continually. Anyway. I love you. I'm going to say goodnight because I'm going to read another one, okay? I'll go ahead and finish up 37 because it was saying that 36 and 37 are a part of this conversion story. Very important. And Alma is a very important character, okay? Take care.